So something really interesting happened as I sat down to film this, this review for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. No spoilers, by the way, but something funny happened. Paul Rudd, it was interviewed by Insider and he revealed something that I think would have made me like the movie a lot more. In fact, one of the problems that I had with the movie could have been fixed by this one thing that he revealed and I'm like, but more on that in just a bit on the review. So first things first, I want this to be very candid, very raw. I have some notes here, just a little bit of my thoughts, but I want to be, you know, I want this to be an honest review. First things first, I had a blast with Ant-Man. Um, it's, it's an Ant-Man film, right? I mean, the first two weren't the greatest MCU movies in the world, but they were still a lot of fun. And that's, that's what Ant-Man Quantumania is for me. Now I've said this, it isn't what some other people say, but to me, it was the best Ant-Man movie, to me personally. Now, like to my buddy Greg over at The Real Rejects, he does not think that. Uh, talk to Brandon Davis over at comicbook.com, he thinks the first Ant-Man's the best, but I think this one was pretty dang good uh, as far as Ant-Man movies go. So I rank this one the highest of the Ant-Man movies. Quick disclaimer, um, don't let my opinion influence whether you like a movie or don't like a movie. Um, so please, if I say some good things, some bad things, don't go into the movie thinking, well, oh, this movie's gonna suck or it's gonna be fantastic. Like, go to the movie, form your own opinion. I don't ever wanna be that person that's like making people hate movies because I love movies, I love movies. And what I'm gonna do is gonna start with the good and go into what I kind of had problems with. So to start off on the positive side, Ant-Man and the Wasp, it, it, it's just an awesome movie. It's just a fun time. Like the experience is just, it's good. It's really good. It has some really great parts to it, some really great scenes, a really fun movie. And I think a lot of people are gonna really enjoy this film. It's got a lot to it. It's funny, it's got good humor, which I'm about to talk about. It's got good humor, but it's very heartfelt. It's touching. There's some great action scenes and Kang is just insane. Jonathan Majors is perfect. It's perfect. But one thing I, I do want to talk about the humor because like with Thor Love and Thunder, they went too far. They didn't find that sweet spot. And, and this is something I think a lot of fans are really going to like about Ant-Man and the Wasp. They found the humor sweet spot. To me, I wasn't exhausted with the jokes. They weren't so rapid fire. They weren't like every second. And the movie does kind of stop and tone down for the more serious parts. So, whereas Thor Love and Thunder went too far and never really toned down, I think Ant-Man and the Wasp found its sweet spot. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania found its sweet spot. And I think people are going to really like the humor in this movie. I did. I know I was laughing at a lot of the jokes. Um, and I feel like because there weren't so many, they hit harder, if that makes sense. But this, you know, to me, when I say something's really fun, it, it's awesome. The humor is really a, a good part of it. For me i thought they were very clever jokes and i think they found that sweet spot now quantum mania is the perfect title for this movie because again no spoilers in this but they spend 95 percent of the film in the quantum realm like it's like they go in and the movie's in the quantum room right that's the movie and it's really cool and by the way i am going to talk a little bit about post credit scenes like i said no spoilers but we're going to talk about them because they're important so you, we dive deeper into the quantum realm, deeper than we've ever, ever been in the quantum realm. And it's really cool because it's not just like, I feel like we saw the surface level, but they really, really just went deeper in this movie. And it's really cool because it seems to be a very important kind of universe or a, a space between universes, a space between time and space. And it's going to be important moving forward. I, I think it's going to be important for King moving forward. So... They did a really good job with all of these characters. We're introduced to a ton of new characters as well. Some are really awesome, some are really funny, have really cool stories, and some are just, you know, kind of there. They're interesting to say the least, but to me, this new world inside of the Quantum Realm really felt like Star Wars. Now, I know some people are like on the fence about that, but for me, as a Marvel and a Star Wars fan, yes, it is possible to be both. I quite enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool. And it wasn't like, hey, let's make this like Star Wars. It just kind of felt like that. But I thought it was really cool. I thought there was a, a good story with some of the characters and this kind of Star Wars like secret underground world inside of the quantum realm. I thought it was really cool. It, it was really cool. Janet's story 
is very interesting and they really you know they haven't really told that story to anybody i mean she just got out of the quantum realm in the last ant-man movie right so and she was in in end game right at least they weren't fighting they might have been there at the end in the funeral i can't remember but uh she has a really cool story and her character overall is just really interesting and just bravo because it's 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 really good it's really good now she was in there for 30 years right and she never told anybody but of course she had interactions with king so the story between the two of them is really cool and i think a lot of people are really going to enjoy it now of course speaking of king mm, jonathan majors i clap for you because you know when they said he was going to be king and i saw him all big and buff for creed i was just like yes like Yes, and then when I saw him for the first time in the mask, when the blues over him, you know, on the trailers and the teases and everything like that, I was like, this is so freaking cool. And he it's spot on. He's spot on. He's an incredible king. Like he really is just just spot on. He he's menacing, he's big, he's ba he's the big bad, right? He's he's the next Thanos, he's bigger than Thanos, he's the guy that's beat all of the Avengers before and other timelines in the past, whatever it may be. That's him. He's King the Conqueror, and that he stole the show for me. He stole the show for me. I know it's an Ant-Man film, but he, he really did. He stole the show for me. Now, Paul Rudd obviously is an amazing Ant-Man, and his character was fantastic as well. So the two of them really get the spotlight on the screen. It was it was quite something, and I think fans are really going to love Jonathan Majors as Kang and are really going to be glad that he is the big bad. Now, there are a lot of really interesting and captivating scenes with Kang that I truly appreciated because it's not just like, hey, fight, hey, technology, let's do all this. But there's some like deep conversations and to me, super captivating, even if it's just showing Kang with Ant-Man talking or or Janet going over some of their history. It's just really intense and it really brings you in. And it's just I love everything about Kang and all of his scenes. Now, Modoc. I know everyone has been asking about Modoc. Um, I quite liked him, <laughs> and I feel kind of weird that I'm saying that I liked him because he is done in a in an interesting way. And many of you have seen him, you know, in the trailers and everything like that. I think he was super funny, right? But at the same time, he has some really great moments where he's very menacing and you know is fighting. And I think it's kind of what you would expect from Modoc. I think it's pretty cool. He's funny and he's menacing at the same time, which is really hard to do. But I think his story and his arc in the movie, people are going to like. Um, I really kind of just found him more funny than anything. And I think that is what some people feared. So if that's what you're fearing, yes, he is funny. Is, is he, you know, Modoc? Yes. Is he designed for killing? Yes. You know, only for killing. So you do get that. You get that. He's very menacing and he is, you know, a villain. So you know, hold your breath just a little bit. So make an opinion after you see him. So here's where we get into the little, kind of the, the the negative side of it. And I hate to be negative, but I gotta be honest. The overall story is where things get a little blurred for me on if it was good and bad. You know, the overall story makes sense. Why Kang needs Ant-Man, you know, ant Man stuck down there. The whole, you know, you're gonna do what I tell you to do or I'm gonna hurt your family. Like that all makes sense, but there's a lot of moving parts to this movie. And sometimes it feels like they're all over the place. The story could have been just a little bit stronger to me. Now, like I said, there's some great moments. There's some great action scenes. There's a, there's a lot of good action scenes. And I, I was never bored, never bored in the movie at all. Like I, I was entertained the entire time, but there are a lot of moving parts and, and you know, some scenes get lost and Kang really does steal the show. Um, and a lot of these scenes with these other characters sometimes don't do a really good job of pulling you in and kind of making you care, if that makes sense. You know, not they don't do a good job at getting you to invest in some of these characters. And unfortunately, one of these characters is Hope. I feel like Hope kind of gets, kind of gets like sidelined in this, which is weird because it's Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. But I feel like she was kind of just there and I'm bummed about that because I do like her as a character. And I really liked, you know, how her and, and Scott Lang were in Ant-Man and the Wasp, the first one. So, unfortunately, 
she doesn't really get that much spotlight here. Um, she has some few good scenes, but most of the scenes that she's in are kind of forgettable or they're mixed with other scenes that are more focused on other characters. And she's, like I said, she's kind of just there. You know, for the most part, the spotlight is on Ant-Man, Kang, Janet. You know, Hank Pym does get his moments, however. He does get his moments um, and he has some cool scenes. He isn't sidelined as much as Hope. In fact, I would say he's a little bit more important to the movie then Hope actually probably considerably more important, which is also weird because again, it's Ant-Man and the Wasp, not, you know, the original Ant-Man and the original Wasp, which is kind of what they're trying to do here uh, as well. I know a lot of people aren't gonna like that Hope wasn't really the center of attention, um, like nearly as much as the other characters, but uh, Hank isn't at the center a lot really as well. Like I said, it really does come down to Ant-Man, Kang, Janet, and Cassie. I will say, Cassie's great. Catherine Newton did an incredible job at playing the role of Cassie, and the character is very interesting. It's very interesting. She has some great moments in the movie, a lot of great moments in the movie, a lot of great father-daughter moments, and her character just in general is interesting, and you root for her character, and you do get invested in the relationship with Scott and his daughter, Cassie. It's, she's funny, she's genu genuinely charismatic, and serious when she needs to be. Like you feel the gravity of some of the serious scenes that she's in with Kang and that she's in with Scott. I wanted more of her. She in and only because I feel like she was so great. I actually think she got the amount of time that she deserved. She really did. She's like Scott's driving force for the movie, right? A father trying to protect his daughter, a father trying to get, you know, his daughter out of the quantum realm, out of danger. It really is the driving force for him and this goes back to Hope, it's not so much for Hope. <laughs> you know, he's, it's really, he's really focused on Cassie. Now, I say that she got enough because of the timing of the movie. She is great, and I did want more of her. And this is kind of where I have some of my issues with the movie. The story, again, it's fine. It's nothing special, but it could have been made into a bigger deal. A lot of the story doesn't pull you in and make you feel connected to a lot of the characters. It does a fine job with, you know, the main characters, like I said, but sadly, this is where my issue with the movie comes in. The story is fine. It's nothing too special, which is the problem. It's nothing too special, especially when it was marketed as a really big movie. And I thought it was gonna be a really big movie. The story doesn't do a great job at pulling you in for some characters and make you feel connected to a lot of them. Sadly, Hope is one of those characters. But the movie needed to be, I think, about 40 minutes longer. This movie is just a little bit over two hours. It needs to be longer. And I know some people are tired of like three hour movies, but this movie genuinely needed to be longer. I think it should be a two hour, two hour and 40 minute movie. And it wasn't. We needed more for the story, for Kang. And here's my biggest complaint about the movie. We needed more Kang. We needed a lot more Kang. And we specifically needed more of Kang fighting. I wanted more of a demonstration of his powers. And we got a little bit of it, but there's a lot of scenes where he's kind of just talking and they're really good. Don't get me wrong, they're really good. But I needed more of him fighting you you don't get much of him fighting and that's my biggest complaint in all honesty about the movie it didn't necessarily ruin the movie for me um, but it kept it from being a really great movie and it did kind of let me down now it's crazy like i said as paul rudd recently revealed that they had to actually cut some scenes of him and kang fighting because they were too violent and i'm like what that's my complaint. That's like my biggest complaint about the movie is that I wanted more fighting because the trailers look so promising for these killer fights. And don't get me wrong, like I said, there there are, but I needed more. I wanted it to be longer. The movie needed to be longer. So that's kind of my biggest complaint about the movie. And some people might think it's okay and some people might agree with me, which is fine. Again, go to the movie and form your own opinion. Now, like I said, the final battle to me was kind of a letdown because of how short it was and just how it wasn't too much involved with Kang. I mean, it was involved with Kang, but it could have been more of Kang showcasing 
his true power. And I'm not going to say any more because it's a spoiler, but you'll see what I mean. And I'm curious to hear everybody's thoughts. We'll do a spoiler talk uh, after it's already out. Now, the post credit scenes. Okay. They're important. The first one is more important than the second. So the mid credit scene, no spoilers again, but it's... I was I stood up and I clapped and I and I yelled and I was like freaking awesome. It's awesome. It really is and it's really it's really important. Now, here's kind of a funny thing. After I got out of the movie, met with my friend E-Man. Uh, he was there ran into him on the carpet. We were, you know, just talking about the movie and he said and I was like that post credit and he was like the post credit scene should not be better than the movie and he felt like it was. Now, it was insane. It was super, super cool. And I do agree with him at where it shouldn't be, but I don't think it was better the entire movie. However, definitely one of the highlights of the movie. So stick around for that post credit scene. Um, and the second one, without going into any spoilers, it's not as groundbreaking as the mid credit scene. However, it's still extremely exciting and it gives us a look into the future just a little bit. So stick around for both of those. I truly did love both of the post credit scenes. So I think overall, a lot of people are going to really enjoy this movie. I think people are probably going to have some of the same qualms that I had with it. And yeah, I'm just excited to hear what everybody thinks about it. Now, if I had to rate it, cause I know everybody's been asking me to rate it, probably a seven out of 10. I think it's like a good C. Um, C plus like if they could have fixed a few things and just made the movie a little bit longer and gave me more Kang I would have been really really happy. They they kind of showcased this and marketed it as a huge Avengers level movie And I just feel like we didn't get that it wasn't on that level It's still very much just an Ant-Man movie, which I was fine with I still had a lot of fun with it I still thought it was pretty awesome. Uh, is it one of the greatest Marvel movies ever? No But I think a lot of people are gonna think it's better than multiverse of madness Thor love and thunder, you know, etc Etc, but go to the movie see it for yourself be excited going into it have fun because it's just a fun experience in general And when I do the spoiler talk, let's talk about how you all think or what you all thought about the movie. I'm really excited to hear everybody's reactions to it. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like Marvel, DC, and the other pop culture content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. All I talk about every day. Uh, be sure to like the video and you can always follow me on Instagram and Twitter. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.